Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. It's no secret that Oppo, Realme, and OnePlus are sister brands within the same parent company. And as such, their phones come with the same software interface. Whether your phone has Oppo's ColorOS 14, Realme's Realme UI 5, or OnePlus's Oxygen OS 14, you'll get the same user experience. Let's dive into what it's all about. The interfaces I'm talking about are the most current ones, based on Android 14. You'd feel right at home if you've recently used any one of the three OS's. You can store your apps within your typical app drawer. Or you have the option to keep all of your apps on the home screen. By default, a swipe down on the home screen opens a system-wide search feature. You can also make it so that a swipe down gives you quick access to the notification shade. The icon pull-down gesture is quite useful for phones with large screens, making your icons easier to reach one-handed. And large folders allow you to show up to nine apps in a compact space on the home screen, and each can be tapped and opened directly. A convenient feature is that if you hold down the fingerprint reader when unlocking, you'll get a pop-up menu with app shortcuts. Through the recent apps menu, you can open a pair of apps into a split screen. You can adjust how much space each one gets as well. And also, from recent apps, you can open up an app as a floating window. The smart sidebar is a place to store shortcuts, and apps open from here will automatically start up within a floating window as well. Through the sidebar, you can activate a feature called Background Stream, which allows you to continue playing a streaming app in the background. When it comes to notifications, there's a feature called Smart Notification Hiding. You enroll your Face ID, and if someone else is looking at the phone, the phone will hide the contents of pop-up notifications. But if it sees that you're looking at the phone, you can see messages pop up normally. And Smart Suggestions are banners that can provide real-time info from supported apps for things like a food delivery or a ride-hailing service. The interface supports the use of additional gestures. For example, you can launch things like the camera or the flashlight by drawing letters on the locked screen. And on certain devices, usually higher-end handsets, you can control the phone from afar with air gestures. Many of the UI elements are customizable. You get options including wallpapers, themes, icons, and fonts. And the always-on display offers a wide variety of customizations as well. And finally, you can connect your phone wirelessly to a PC or another Oppo, Realme, or OnePlus device. The connection is basically a screencast with the option to share files. You don't get a full-screen PC-like interface like Samsung's DeX. What I've gone over so far was already present last year. Now let's get into what's new in this year's version of these interfaces. For example, on the sidebar you get the file dock. It's a place that can store content such as screenshots, images, and extracted text for you to share later to other apps. You can extract text from a screenshot. Then you can add that selected text into the file dock. Within the Photos app, you can also easily extract objects within an image by holding down on them. And there's something called Aqua Dynamics, which is a bit like Apple's Dynamic Island. When certain apps are active, like the recorder, they will minimize into a bubble at the top of the screen. Then you can tap the bubble again to call up the app. So there you have it, ColorOS 14, Realme UI 5, and Oxygen OS 14 based on Android 14. It's far from an overhaul compared to the previous versions, and you miss out on the advanced AI-powered features offered on Galaxy or Pixel phones. But still, there are plenty of features to be had, including a few new ones, and the experience is overall quite smooth. Let us know what you think, and I'll see you on the next one.